lot of cinematographers out there they've been looking for something like this. Really giving it a different approach to the whole thing and really it's more about concentrating on lighting not concentrating how can I get eight tons of equipment from A to B and that just you know it's just a freedom we can give to people this way. It's tremendously impressive. Here we are sitting in a beautifully lit room and there's no cables, we've got no lights around us and it's all happening out there and then it's coming into the room. It's very impressive. So I can see some obvious advantages, less equipment, yeah. equipment that's not yeah. in the way. Yeah. You're not heating up your talent. Of course, yeah. You're not blinding your talent. You're giving the director more room. You're giving the cinematographer a room. At the same time, when you do changes in positions with the camera, it's not like relighting like massively. You go from here to here, it's not a problem, you know? And there's so little stuff standing out here. Even if you want to look out the window at some point, it's no problem. Just push the whole thing a little bit over and set it up again. And at the same time, it's really silent, you know? It's not heavy stuff. A lot of guys out there having to fight the lamps. It's really small and sensitive stuff. So basically, we got one setup here. We got one lamp, 1200 watts. It's going directly into a one by one meter white reflector, which means it has the maximum diffusion. This is giving our basically our key light, the soft key light penetrating the room. Now, because it's only one light source, and we've got to get some fill light going, usually we'd start putting up stands in the set, and we're still keeping the set free, free from stands. So to get some fill light into the room, what I'm doing is, I'm taking out with the black reflector, which is meant for reflecting light, onto another reflector. I'm taking out some light, bouncing from the black light down onto a 50-50 blue, which is a little bit softer already, it's got more diffusion going, and this is bouncing up towards the ceiling. This is what happens, that way we can really easily adjust light levels. So when the director is not wanting to shoot, and the DP is still not really happy because seeing a little bit less, a little bit more, usually you've got guys on the set doing stuff around, this is real easy adjustment. All I do is, I go onto this Nogam, open it up, change the reflector a little bit, and I'm tuning light really softly. And what I'm also doing is, I'm dimming light, because the more I take the light source out of it, I'm doing less light. And as soon as I take it into the light source, I'm getting more light. And I'm doing this without changing any color temperature, because I'm just taking more or less light out of the light source. Basically, we have the whole room lit now. As you can see, there are no stands inside. Actors can move where they want, they can sit down where they want. Now to change light, what we're going to do is we're going to pan the lamp away again completely. And just keep an eye out, Martin's panning it away now how the light suddenly changes. Stop! This might be the night situation. We change the complete look of the setup just by tiny adjustments on the lamp. So by doing a little bit of stuff, we can really create new moods. So we're much faster in this kind of a way in setting up. And that's giving actors more time, giving directors more time, giving the DTP more time to find nice shots. So just have a look at where we started out. This means we're having no light. The light slowly moving away. This is about how the room looks like without light. We're going to bring it back in again. Slowly the light's coming back. And every any time the DP can say stop because he wants to have it. And here's where we had it lit. So once again, I can walk around wherever I want to. There are no stands on the set. We've got complete freedom of everything. And very quickly, if you want a different result, you can move a few things, which isn't the same as tearing apart the room and starting again, which you would never, ever have room for. Yeah, and not the time. And then you just shoot in this situation, or you have to go in and step in, okay, half an hour break, you know? That, take away the energy flow, having the actors wanting to be there. You know, you want to have the whole energy flow going the whole day as a cinematographer, you know? And as a gaffer, I really want to try to give the people that possibility. And if I have the feeling I have to relight two hours and everyone's sitting, watching, being bored and falling asleep, and everyone's just, you know, sweat is running because you have to go through everything, I don't want, never want to be in that situation as a gaffer. I've got cinematographers that say, hey, can you do this in five minutes? Is it possible? Can we do this still? And that's the best part of the job when I can say, sure, let's, let's do it, finished. Tell me what the cinematographers say when they see this, because it is so innovative. It's amazing. A lot of them are scared at first, but it's about it's a lot about the process of, of explaining it to people, giving them a feeling of what the lighting system is about. And then like a lot of people are just stunned by it. It's like you still can do everything that we could do before. 
at the same time we can do stuff faster and different and totally different results at the same time it's still a lighting system we're not breaking the laws of physics it's still physics at its highest most mature point i feel in lighting wise and so you know it's we're st yeah we're still lighting the big difference to what we do is we call it reflecting it's not bouncing because it's about zoning light you got the maximum diffusion of like a 30 30 like here and you're taking the soft light and saying i'm just going to put it right here I'm not, maybe i'm going to put it here and this decision of course you can make by having a big light source out there by bouncing it out there but that decision then has to be made by bringing in a huge amount of blacks to take out light again to get it there that's the reason you have 200k out there or 20k or 50k out there because you're taking away so much light that by the time it what's is really on your face it's like 500 watts so why not just use one plug that's in the household and do the same thing like this without going to tons of work and problems with relighting and everything that comes with it. The way the light interacts with, for example, the skylight or with the natural light, it really blends beautifully. So when you say I'm going to put one zoning here and one zoning here, the, the actors can walk in and out of it. You know, It's not necessary to say everything has to be the same. It's beautiful. You know? You've got modulations. They're coming into the light, they go out of the light. Now we've got the yellow one. This is the effect light that we're using for the inside, like you're seeing off this one here. And basically it's giving us a kind of a sunspot. If you want to look outside there, just to see the amount of power of light that I'm getting out of this. This is 1200 watts. I'm going in with a small reflector. I've got all this light going. Like six different reflectors that you start out with. You've got three of them for diffusion. You've got white maximum diffusion. You've got a blue that's a medium diffusion. You've got a black, which is basically for bouncing light around. So you can go from one reflector into the next one. And they're going to have three effects. You've got the green one, which is kind of an oval shape. So you don't need all the flags, you don't need all the frames for that stuff. It's kind of fused. And you've got the, the red one, which is really like a, it's like a strip of light that you can put over a table or something, or you can put it on a wall, or you can sew into the background of a housing for night shots. Then you've got the yellow one, which is really nice for sunspots, like we've got happening here. Just to demonstrate again, okay? Here's the black one. This is the hardest one. Basically, for redirecting light, you can see it's like a spot. Maybe you can use it for something sunny or something, but basically we only use it for redirecting light. And just imagine, I have this small reflector in my hand, and we're going off at 1200 watts. We're getting a tremendous amount of light going. So this is the black one for redirecting light. Now we get the blue one. This is one set more of it diffused. See how beautiful already the surface is coming? We get a much bigger spread out of it. And we're still using this kind of a small reflector. Just look up there. The whole ceiling is starting to become alive. So this is the blue one. And uh, if you look up there, what I was mentioning earlier with dimming, right? Which is really important for us. Because usually you say, okay, this is good, but we need less light. So what are you doing? You're adding scrims. You have to put a dimmer in it. The color chain, temperature is changing. All we have to do is pan the reflector slightly out of the light. Well, look how beautiful the dimming process is coming along. I'm just taking it. It's out of the light. I'm slowly putting it into the light, and suddenly we're getting more and more and more light. And look at the power of the small reflector that I have. I'm taking it out again, and I'm getting less light. So it's just really simple and easy to decide how much light I want to do without adding extra kind of electronics or whatever you need to control your light. It's just simple and easy, because that's what we want, because we want to work fast and we want to work silent. And we want to have beautiful light, of course. So this is the blue one. Now we've got the white one, maximum kind of diffusion. So, see, you're going to get much less light out of this. So just look at the spread on the ceiling. Almost the whole ceiling is becoming alive now. Usually, for example, now the, the small white one is not going to be enough. So what they're going to do is if they say, okay, this is beautiful, but it's not enough light, all I have to do is switch to a 30-30, take one bigger one, and there you go. Suddenly you got tremendous amount of light again, and you got the whole ceiling going, got the whole surface here. So now I'm dimming out the light, taking out the light, taking the reflector back in, and getting more light, and getting less light. No change in color temperature, no extra equipment needed. And we're already doing an amazing amount of dimming. Okay, they got the red one, which is basically a really our hard kind of lighting. Or we just can turn it to get a different kind of movement going. And once again, with the new kind of data grip we got now, it's really easy to mount and no problems. 
So now we got the green one. See, the green one is an oval shape as well. I can turn it. But it's going to be much softer already, and much more diffused. This is our workhorse, basically. The green reflect I'm using all the time. And you don't need any flags to get this going. You just can create your light the way you need it without anything going on. So, for example, controlling light. You've got the spot of light happening here on the table, and then you need some light for the face, so you just kind of take the light off of here. If you would put another lamp here, you wouldn't only have cables and all the stuff around in the room, they also create, okay, what's with the spill light? Then you have to start to box it in. Now it's going to be in the frame. Just adding a small reflector here is doing that for you. So it's still about, it's actually about even more control, I feel, because we're not taking the time that would be necessary to worry about spill light and stuff, but really it's about doing exactly what you want to do in an efficient way. And what is the plan? Is it to market it and turn yes. it into a lighting yes, system exactly. for the world? Exactly. That's the plan right now. That's the reason we're working together with Data now. He's developed a lens for his 400D, for the 200D. It's amazing that lens. Like it doubles the amount of light output that you have initially from the, from the 400. And so, yeah, we're going to be using that right now for the first time. We'll see how that goes from there. Yeah. And also what happens with double bounces where we really start to light with the system is if you're not using a parallel light source, the light falls apart. It's not working anymore. Like you do like a double bounce like we're doing here. It wouldn't work if you would be using a Fresnel lamp or a PAR lamp. Yeah, so it's really about, that's the reason Data built this lens, that you really get something that works for the system. Yeah, you can't use any kind of light with it. Yeah, it's a system. When we're starting out and we have to come back here, we've got a small space and we want to act it, want to do something here, but it's going to be too dark. Data's got a beautiful selection of small lamps, like the 200D or the 400D, that we can place in here. And basically there's going to be no spill light from this kind of a light, because just the way it's built with a kind of lens, a special adapter for the CRLS system. So we're going to do this now. We're going to put in a small lamp in here. I'm pretending there's a window back here. So we're going to place the lamp back here and do a reflector here to get some light going onto the shelf. So when the actor comes here and is looking for a cookbook or something, we get some light here. This stuff works with sunlight as well, and it works with the small data lights as well. So it's about, it's just being able to take your two hands, have your whole lighting system with you, and being able to set it up on your own. And with what we're having now with the 200D with the new lens and the 400 with the new lens, it's going to be the same for the documentary. It's going to be a major amount of difference in quality of light output. He's always been about innovation, and he's always been about beauty, you know, in, in, in all this stuff he does. You know, it's like artists, when they paint a picture, they don't want to think about the pencil. Always when you put, take a data light into your hand, you're not thinking about the data light. You're thinking about what it's doing and what you want it to do. And that's a huge difference. And so I guess that's where we really found a connection. And Christian and Data, of course, know, know each other a very long time. So the connection there as well. But it's, so it's, you know, it's going down a new road from now, which is a really, really exciting thing. It's not a system where you can say it can replace everything. It's not there for that. It's for people who want to find something new, for people who want to find their own voice in their lighting, in the way they want to work, for people who are willing to go on an adventure and say, okay, I want to find something new for myself. I'm a cinematographer out there. I don't want to do what everyone's doing. I want to be out there and say, I'm finding something innovative. I want to try something new. You know, I'm at the tip of my toes, you know? That's, that's the people that I think that will be the most happy with working with it. Mm -hmm.